Good morning, First Church family. Today, the Gospel reading gives us the account of Jesus' baptism at the River Jordan. The following is amusing by Reverend Pratt, in which she includes an excerpt from the poem At the River Clarion, written by Mary Oliver. Reverend Pratt says, Around the same time that I was rereading this story, I came across this poem by Mary Oliver. And even though it's not necessarily a poem about it, I instantly had this image of baptism. Maybe not baptism like I or even many of you have experienced, but perhaps baptism as it ought to be. Maybe baptism is a time, not a legalism, but of freedom, a symbol, not of black and white rules or nitpicky formulas, but of God's beauty and creativity. Maybe baptism is a marker of God's grace in our lives, and maybe it isn't a magic trick that changes us instantly, but maybe it flows like a great and steady river in places we couldn't imagine, and maybe it speaks to us throughout our lives in ways we would have never expected. Maybe baptism is something we could hold onto and look back on amidst the inevitable seasons of doubt, uncertainty, or apathy on our journey. May we enter into worship with an excerpt from this poem at the River Clarion, written by the poet Mary Oliver. I don't know who God is exactly, but I'll tell you this. I was sitting in the river named Clarion on a water-splashed stone, and all afternoon I listened to the voices of the river talking. Whenever the water struck a stone, it had something to say, and the water itself, and even the mosses trailing under the water. And slowly, very slowly, it became clear to me what they were saying. Said the river, I am part of holiness. And I too, said the stone, and I too, whispered the moss beneath the water. I'd been to the river before a few times. Don't blame the river that nothing happened quickly. You don't hear such voices in an hour or a day. You don't hear them at all if selfhood has stuffed your ears. And it's difficult to hear anything anyway through all the traffic the ambition. Of course, for each of us, there is the daily life. Let us live it gesture by gesture to remember that we receive, then we give back. And still pressed deep into my mind, the river keeps coming, touching me, passing by on its long journey, its pale, infallible voice singing. Friends, I invite you to gather a small bowl of water as we come together to celebrate the baptism of Jesus. At his baptism, Christ is named the beloved Son of God and commissioned to begin his public ministry. May this water remind us of the grace of our own baptisms, when we too were claimed as God's beloved and anointed to serve God and one another. Holy God, creator of light and herald of goodness, at the waters of baptism you proclaimed Jesus your beloved Son. With the baptized of every time and generation, may we say yes to your call to repentance and to be led to the life of abundance we experience in your kinship and in your love. Amen. My friends, let us join together and let us sing. A 
reading from the Gospel according to Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. My friends, these are holy words for a holy people. Thanks be to God. And let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come and light the fire of love in our hearts. May the words of my mouth, may the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable to you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. For a while now, once I find a book I love, a book which touches my heart and transforms my soul, I buy a hardcover copy of it and add it to a bookshelf in my room. Close at hand should I need something to read which will inspire and nurture. Something close at hand to point to when I whine to Jim, I need something to read. Recently, however, my tradition has hit a snag, for more often than not, the book I'm reading is one I've actually listened to. And in some cases, I cannot imagine the text without the author's narration. Such is the case with Patti Smith's memoir, Just Kids. In it, Smith tells the story of her relationship with fellow artist Robert Maplethorpe, of how their relationship, like their art, transforms and changes and matures as they grow older. And Just Kids also led me into a rabbit hole of 1960s New York and months of further reading about the Chelsea Hotel, Andy Warhol, and the underground art scene. One aspect of this period that captivated my imagination were events called happenings. These happenings were something completely new in the art world. Rather than creating an object like a sculpture or a painting or a quilt or creating a work like a piece of music or a play or a dance, artists who created happenings facilitated an interactive experience that both the artist and the audience participated in and interacted with. The idea was to break down the boundaries of who was the artist, of who was the audience, and of what the art really was. Each part, the artist, the audience, and the work was in a process as the happening unfolded. Each component was becoming art as the event took place. This morning, we hear in our scripture from the Gospel according to Mark the stories of John the Baptist and of Jesus' own baptism in the Jordan River. And yes, we are experiencing a bit of collective deja vu. We did indeed just hear this reading exactly one month ago as we were preparing the way of the Lord in Advent. And spoiler alert, we're going to hear this reading again in about a month and a half as we begin our Lenten journey to the cross and to the empty tomb. Clearly, the, the framers of our lectionary think this is an important text for us to spend some time with, to ponder it, and to, to consider it over and over again. The author of Mark believed it was important, too, for it is the way they begin their telling of Jesus' work and of his ministry. There, in the middle of a muddy river, Jesus standing next to a guy dressed in camel's hair and snacking on honey-glazed grasshoppers. For being such an important story, it's surprisingly brief. The actual baptism story itself is just three verses long. Jesus comes to John at the Jordan. John baptizes Jesus in the water. 
And when Jesus arises out of the water, the spirit in the form of a dove descends upon him and a voice calls out, you are my beloved, with you I am pleased. That's it. In typical Markan fashion, the story is stripped down to its basics and then immediately passed by as we move on to the next story. Yet, in this brief text, in these few sentences, one Greek word appears over and over and over. A geneto. Unfortunately, our translators do not render this word consistently for us in English. They translate it as now and and or even in those days, but in its purest form, the word means happening or becoming. It happened or became that John was baptizing in the wilderness. It happened or became that Jesus came from Nazareth. It happened or became that out of heaven a voice, you are the son of me, the beloved, and you I am well pleased. The story of Jesus' baptism, it is a story of becoming. A happening in which each of the participants is transformed by the experience. John recognizes that standing in front of him is the hope he has longed for. Jesus grows more fully into his identity as God's beloved son who will carry out God's mission of justice and compassion, of healing and reconciliation, a ministry now able to begin because of his knowledge and confidence in that identity. And God, God is transformed by taking on flesh in Christ and continuing a process of drawing ever closer to us in forgiveness and in love. And in baptism, we too are invited into the process of becoming, of becoming ever more fully the person God has created us to be, of growing into the recognition of our own and of others, belovedness in Christ of embracing the the Spirit's call to take up Jesus' mission of justice and compassion, of healing and reconciliation in the world. This is the happening we celebrate in baptism. For in our baptism, we promise to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best we are able. In these past days, we have witnessed oppression and evil filling our television screens and our social media feeds. Violence and racism, hatred and lies have been on full display. Our call in baptism is to become witnesses to the way of Jesus, the way of justice and compassion, of reconciliation and truth, the way of love and of peace. The life of faith is a leaning into this way. This is the becoming we mark each and every time we remember our baptisms and that we give thanks for them. So friends, let us become God's children, God's beloved, God's witnesses. So let it happen. Amen. let us pray. Holy God, we pray for the world you have made. Move again over these troubled waters. 
where carelessness and violence bring chaos, restore order and goodness and life. We pray for the church. Renew in us the gifts of your spirit and the call to Christian discipleship. Where history and heresy have divided us, make us one in the baptism we share. We pray for the people you have created. Give to the leaders of all nations the wisdom to know what is good. Where people are impoverished and hungry, provide justice and bread. In this time of struggle and division in our own nation, give vision and hope and discernment. Calm anxious hearts. Disturb complacent consciences. We pray for the loved ones you have given us. Bless our families and friends and neighbors. Keep them safe from trouble and danger. Where there is sorrow, sickness, or suffering, send your spirit of comfort and healing. We ask all of this in the name of Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, as our first church hymn train offers to us this musical gift. Let us consider, too, the gifts that we will offer for the ministry and mission of Christ's church here in Mansfield. Those gifts can be sent in through our P.O. Box at P.O. Box 36 in Mansfield Center, or they can be sent in through our website at myfcc.info. Let us sing and let us give. <laughs> Thank you. 
friends. May the grace of God deeper than our imagination, the strength of Christ stronger than our need, the communion of the Holy Spirit richer than our togetherness, guide us and sustain us this day and in all our tomorrows. May peace be with you, beloved people of God. Amen.